Hello and welcome to this video on what is the difference between latent class analysis and latent profile analysis. My name is Christian Geiser, I'm an instructor with QuantFish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials. I usually talk about multivariate statistical methods including structural equation modeling, factor analysis, multi-level analysis and latent class and latent profile analysis. If this is something that interests you then please subscribe to this channel. Also don't forget to check out the description to find more resources including workshops that I teach for QuantFish. In this video I want to address the question of what the difference is between latent class analysis and latent profile analysis. And first of all these two methods have one thing in common and that is that they are both latent variable models or latent variable statistical methods. And so we can illustrate latent variable statistical methods with path diagrams. You may be familiar with those from factor analysis. The difference though between latent class and latent profile analysis and factor analysis is that here the latent class variable C is a categorical latent variable, meaning it is not continuous. It is a discrete variable, the values of which are the latent classes. And latent class and latent profile analysis have that in common. With both these methods, we uh, assume that there is an underlying latent variable that is categorical. Now, the difference, the key difference between latent class analysis and latent profile analysis lies in the indicators, which you can see here at the bottom, y1 through y5. Those are the observed variables that are used to measure the latent class variable C. And those indicators can either be categorical, in which case we speak of latent class analysis or sometimes classical latent class analysis or those indicators could be continuous metrical interval scale variables, in which case we speak of latent profile analysis. So with latent profile analysis, we use continuous observed variables such as test sum scores, questionnaire, mean, or sum scores across a number of questionnaire items, whereas with Classical latent class analysis, we're using either binary items or ordinal items as indicators. And so that's the fundamental difference. And that has implications for what is being modeled with those techniques, which is why they are treated differently. Now, that being said, I can already tell you that the difference really isn't that clear cut because modern software programs for latent class and latent profile analysis such as M plus will also handle a mixture of categorical, binary, ordinal and continuous items. So you can have all kinds of different scale levels with regard to your indicators and M plus will still handle that and will still extract a latent class variable for you regardless of whether some items are binary, ordinal or continuous. However, so say in the classical sense, we have that distinction. Early software programs for latent class analysis were not able to handle continuous indicators, which is why those were, or it's one reason why those were handled separately initially. Now, the distinction is more blurred, which is why some folks will call both these techniques and others latent class analysis, because the goal with both these techniques and others is that you want to extract latent classes. And those are both mixture modeling techniques. They only differ with regard to the indicator variables. Now let's move on and let's take a look at what implications that has for the output or the results of latent class versus latent profile analysis. And I'm going to begin with latent class analysis and I'm going to show you what the resulting output for the categorical indicators looks like based on an example. So in this example, the indicators of my latent class variable here are binary items that reflect computer game preference. And they were simply scored as zero for, I do not like to play this type of game and one, I do like to play this type of game. So zero, one, yes, or no, yes. And so all these items can take on only two values, which is why classical latent class analysis with categorical indicators is appropriate here. 
And so as the output then, or item parameters in latent class analysis, we estimate conditional response probabilities for the categories of our binary or in other cases, ordinal items. And those conditional response probabilities obviously can range from zero to one. We could also call them class specific response probabilities because they depend on they depend on membership in a given class C. In this example, a three class solution was selected. So the categorical latent variable C had three categories or classes. Class one is one where you can see that individuals have high probabilities of playing logic and skill games and relatively low probabilities for other games such as action and simulation games. Class two is one with low probabilities across all five types of computer games. So this could be interpreted as a non-player class. And class three interestingly has um, sort of like exactly the opposite pattern compared to class one. So that's almost like a mirror image of class one where those individuals in class three have a high likelihood of uh, liking action games and liking simulation games and where those individuals in class three do not like logic and skill games. So those three classes are clearly distinct and there are clear, um, clear um, differences in terms of qualitative differences between those classes where they either don't like any type of game or they have very specific preferences for specific types of games and those class um, properties are reflected in the conditional response probabilities, which are estimated as one parameter of classical latent class analysis. The second parameter that is estimated for latent class analysis are the latent class sizes or class proportion parameters, which you can see here as percentages in the legend. You can see that class one here comprised 19.2% of individuals, class two comprised 49.2%, so almost half of that um, sample here fell into the non-player class, and then class three had about 32%. And those are um, the class size parameters here given in terms of percentages, and those are also estimated in a classical latent class analysis. Now, you can already see that this sort of estimation of conditional response probabilities would not work for a latent profile analysis because a latent profile analysis deals with continuous indicators. And when you have continuous indicators, so let's say those computer games were scored on a scale from zero to 100, let's say where zero indicates absolutely no preference for, for example, action games and 100 would indicate absolute high loving preference for action games. And then in the middle, you have all kinds of other possibilities to express your liking or disliking of computer games. So on that continuous scale from zero to 100, you would have so many categories. And so having to model the probabilities of all those categories from zero to 100, that's not efficient and that doesn't work. So when we have continuous variables or quasi continuous variables, such as item or questionnaire sum scores, test sum scores, then we use latent profile analysis and then we no longer model conditional response probabilities because there are simply too many categories or too many possible values on those continuous variables. Now then, how does it work for latent profile analysis? What do we look at in terms of profiles? Let's take a look at an example here as well. So in this example, I also have five indicators for a latent class variable. However, in this case, the indicators are scale scores, meaning test or questionnaire sum scores that in this case reflect the big five personality traits, emotional stability, extraversion, openness, agreeableness, and conscientiousness. And so here, what is being modeled are personality profiles. Now, again, those indicators here are continuous in terms of their scale level, so they're no longer binary, and therefore we cannot model conditional response probabilities, but instead what we are modeling now are class-specific or conditional, we could say, means. So 
the means across those five variables are now modeled for different classes. And again, here we have a three class solution where one class is characterized by high average scores on all five big five personality trait scores. The second class is characterized by lower emotional stability, or we could say higher neuroticism, lower extraversion, lower openness, and also lower agreeableness and lower conscientiousness. And then the third class is characterized by really low scores on agreeableness and conscientiousness. And that fits into a personality profile or personality type theory of resilience over controllers and under controllers. And so you can see here again, we have profiles. However, those profiles are now profiles of means and means are in fact not the only thing that we can model with latent profile analysis for continuous variables. But as we will see later, we can also model the variance covariance structure in that situation as well when we have continuous variables. However, the main focus of a latent profile analysis is typically on the class specific means and those are depicted in a profile plot as you can see here. What is also estimated are the class sizes and that parallels what we do in classical latent class analysis. You can see again here we have the percentages of those classes and so that's the same type of parameter that was estimated in a latent class analysis as well, the class proportion or class size parameter. Now let's take a look at latent class analysis and latent profile analysis in a little bit more formal detail in terms of the model equations. And so for latent class analysis, I am showing you here um, an ex equation or model equation for a single item. And so what you can see on the left hand side is the probability that a specific item yi will be scored in category ri for that item i. So in other words, that the response will be either zero or one. So that probability is being modeled here. And on the right hand side, you can see the model parameters of the latent class analysis. And you can see that those conditional response probabilities are a function of the class size parameter gamma C. So this gives the unconditional probability of belonging to a specific class C. And then the second parameter is the class specific item response probability. So the probability that a person in a specific class will choose a certain response category or this response category Ri for this specific item. So two types of parameters in a latent class model, the class size parameter and the conditional response probability. In a latent profile model, we model something different. And so you can see here on the left hand side that what is being modeled is the distribution of a set of continuous scores given model parameters theta. So here we are looking at a set of continuous scores and those are a function again of a class size parameter. So that's the exact same parameter as in classical latent class analysis that gives the unconditional probability of belonging to a latent class C. And then here the next set of parameters that are given here in this function that expresses a class specific distribution. So you can see that this is the, a distribution that is conditional on a class specific mean vector and a class specific covariance matrix sigma C. So mu C here is a class specific mean vector and sigma C indicates a class specific covariance matrix. And that shows you that we can model the means, the class specific means in a latent profile analysis as we've already seen from that example with the profile plot. And that's mostly what we're interested in with the latent profile analysis that we're looking at those class specific means to interpret the classes. But then also we can model class specific covariances and variances. For example, the variances could be modeled as being equal across different classes, or they could be modeled as being different across different classes. There could be some 
per, some of the indicators could be allowed to co-vary within classes. And so that's all then specified within the class specific sigma covariance matrix. And so that is the key difference here between classical latent class analysis, which has only the item parameter, the conditional response probability row, whereas here we have class specific means, variances and covariances. Now, one last thing with regard to the difference between latent class analysis and latent profile analysis, and that concerns model testing. With latent class analysis, we have chi-square statistics available for testing absolute model fit. For example, there's a likelihood ratio chi-square statistic, and there's also Pearson chi-square statistic that you can use in principle to test whether a latent class model fits your observed item response pattern frequencies. And so that is, for example, provided by M plus in the output for a latent profile analysis that is different. For a latent profile analysis, there are no chi-square statistics available for testing absolute model fit, which has to do with the continuous nature of the indicator variable. So that's one important difference that absolute model fit cannot really be assessed at this time with regard to a latent profile analysis. However, what can be done for both latent class analysis and latent profile analysis with regard to model testing is that we can look at relative model fit statistics for model comparison. So for example, we can compare a two class model to a three class model to see if the three class model will fit better than the two class model. And that's called relative model fit or model comparisons. And that can be done with a likelihood ratio difference test, specifically a bootstrap likelihood ratio test that can be, um, can be used or can be obtained, for example, in M plus or also in latent gold. And what we can also do is we can look at other relative model fit statistics, such as information criteria, for example, the Bayesian information criterion BIC can be compared across a two class, three class, four class solution and so on. In my personal experience, class enumeration, meaning finding out how many classes you should retain is a little bit more straightforward with classical latent class analysis with categorical items. It tends to be clearer, so to say, how many classes you should retain in many cases, whereas with, with latent profile analysis, in my experience, um, sometimes the fit will continue to get better as you add more classes and then you end up with 8, 9, 10, 11, and however many classes to where the solution becomes just kind of... Um, too complex to interpret and that also that has to do with the continuous nature of the data where you have a lot more variability in the data and you need a lot more classes oftentimes to really depict the full spectrum of individual differences. I hope you found this video useful to learn about the difference between latent class analysis and latent profile analysis. If you did, then please subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to check out the description for additional resources, especially workshops that I offer on latent class and latent profile analysis through Quantfish, and I'll see you next time.